Hi, my name is Banos Brilakis from VA North Texas Healthcare System and the University of Texas Southwestern Medical School. It is often said that to do CTO interventions, one has to unlearn what he has learned doing non-CTO interventions and then relearn it in a different way. And this is definitely true when it comes to performing and analyzing the coronary angiogram. These are my disclosures. And the analysis of the angiogram is critically important for being successful in CTO intervention because, as in war, it is very important to know and understand the enemy as well as yourself if you need uh, to get uh, to win several battles. So what are the elements of the angiogram that are important to look at? Let's first look at the JCTO score, one score that uses four angiographic parameters to predict the difficulty of crossing the lesion. Those parameters are a blunt proximal cap, second, the presence of calcium within the lesion, third, the presence of more than 45 degree band within the occlusion, and finally, if there's a more than 20 millimeter um, occlusion length. Having these characteristics, especially several of them, is associated with higher complexity and lower likelihood for being successful during CTO intervention. How can we assess those characteristics? The one key component is to do the dual injection. Dual injection was first described by Singh and Holmes from the Mayo Clinic um, about 15 years ago. However, it is critical to be able to understand where the equipment goes into when CTO interventions are being performed. How can dual injection be done? First, we like to use low magnification in order for the entire coronary tree to be included into the image. Second, we inject first the donor vessel and we wait for a couple of seconds before injecting into the CTO vessel itself. We do not pan during the injection and we wait until the contrast clears before we stop the CNA angiogram. Can this be done at the time of diagnostic angiography? Bill Nicholson reported a technique in which a eight French sheath is inserted through which two four French diagnostic catheters are advanced and engage uh, both the CTO vessel and the donor vessel. In, and using this technique, one can obtain with a single arterial stick a dual injection. The hybrid algorithm forms uh, the basis on the way we currently perform CTO intervention. And there are four components of the angiogram that are important. First is the proximal cap, second, the distal target, third, the occlusion length, and finally, the presence of interventional collaterals. How do we look for those parameters? We look at them by looking at the angiogram as a team. Everyone in the team, including techs and fellows, is um, reviewing the films. And often it takes a long time, 15 minutes or 30 minutes, of detailed frame-by-frame -frame angiogram review to be able to completely understand how the anatomy looks like. And the goal of this is to develop a strategic plan. Based on the anatomy, there is a plan in terms of which approach we will take, which collateral we will try to engage first and second in order to be successful in the intervention. Again, the goal of this preparation is that when we are actually doing the procedure and we are engaged in doing the procedure, we have a very clear plan and a great strategy about how to do things. That doesn't mean we cannot modify it. Things can always be modified and improved. However, we have a nice predefined strategy based on the way the angiogram looks like. So what do we look for in the proximal cap? First, we look at how the vessel looks proximal to the occlusion. Is the vessel diseased? Is there calcification? Um, what is um, the tortuosity of the vessel? Second, do we understand where the proximal cap is? Or is it ambiguous? Third, is the proximal cap tapered or blunt? Tapered is easier to penetrate compared to blunt. Fourth, are there any side branches that can both serve as outlets for the wire instead of engaging the CTO, the wire might actually go in the side branch. However, they can also be used for performing side branch anchoring if more support is needed. And finally, we look at the calcification, both proximal to the occlusion as well as the proximal cap that might require uh, more aggressive techniques in order to allow penetration. This is an example of a right coronary artery CTO. With single injection, it's pretty hard to uh, fully appreciate it because the only thing we can see is that there's a clear proximal cap, whereas the length, the distal vessel, and the collaterals are unclear. However, once we do a dual injection, 
it is now evident that the distal vessel is of good quality and large caliber, that the occlusion is short, that the collateral is mainly epicardial, and the JCTO score is zero, suggesting that the vessel would be easily to cross, as was indeed the case in this patient. This is another example of a proximal circumflex CTO, which once again is different, difficult to appreciate before dual injection is being performed. However, using dual injection through the right coronary artery, one can see that the occlusion is actually fairly short and the distal cap is at a bifurcation. This is another example of a patient with previous coronary bypass that often have complex anatomy. There is a proximal circumflex CTO with the obtuse marginal branch filling from a vein graft. It is hard, again, to appreciate the occlusion. However, when dual injection is performed, it is now clear that we are dealing not with one, but with actually two CTOs. One is a proximal circumflex CTO, and the second is a CTO in the first obtuse marginal branch, just distal to the touchdown of the vein graft. This is another example of a patient with a right coronary artery CTO who has severe calcification and also has a good caliber side branch, which was used for enhancing support during attempts to deliver a balloon after the guided wire crossing. Second component we look at is the lesion length. Again, that's critical to, to um, evaluate and dual injection is important because single injection invariably overestimates the length of the occlusion. The distal cap, we look at the caliber and the quality of the distal vessel. We look at the presence of bifurcations that uh, might result in side branch closure if we go subintimally and then re-enter. And finally, we look at any bypass graft in sensor sites that might um, complicate the wire course distally. This is an example of a right coronary artery CTO with the reconstitution of the vessel happening at the distal bifurcation of the PDA and the posterior lateral vessel. Finally, we look at the collateral vessels and we look at whether it's uh, septals, bypass grafts, and epicardials, what's the type of the vessel. Second, what is the size? And we use the Werner classification, as we'll discuss in a second. Third, we look at if they're straight or tortuous. Fourth, what is the dominance, meaning what's the dominant source of blood supply to the occluded segment? And this is very important because if there's a single collateral feeding all the distal territory and that becomes occluded during crossing attempts, severe ischemia and or arrhythmias may occur. And finally, we look at where the collaterals touch down the distal vessel, what is the angle and the location of the entry, and we want the entry to be in general further away from the distal cap so there's enough room for equipment to be there and provide us additional support during crossing attempts. This is the Werner classification. The initial one had three categories, CC0, 1, and 2, with CC0 being one without continuous connection, CC1 a thread-like connection, and CC2 a side branch-like connection more than 0.4 millimeters. And now there is a modification, a CC3 collateral with more than one millimeter diameter, which has been sometimes called the Grantham collateral. These are large collaterals that are very appealing and favor upfront use of the retrograde approach. This is an example of a dual injection for evaluating the collaterals in a patient with a right coronary artery CTO. Again, this requires detailed evaluation and then a grading of the collaterals in terms of ease of use. And we try to appreciate which one would be the best collateral to first attempt and what are the consequent choices. This is the same patient during attempts to cross. The wire here is outside the vessel. And that's also important to know before advancing the Corsair. However, once the wire is repositioned, now the wire is in the distal true lumen, and now we can proceed with um, crossing the collateral with the Corsair. Here's an example of a favorable Epicardia collateral, has large caliber and has minimal tortuosity. And on the bottom picture is the image of a very tortuous collateral that is unfavorable for a retrograde approach. This is what happens during systole, where the collateral actually gets compressed, and during diastole, where it not falls. And the goal is to allow wire advancement, for preferentially during diastole, when the tortuosity becomes less. We should not forget the vein grafts. This is an example of a degenerated vein graft supplying the right coronary distal to a CTO. 
And we should also not forget the presence of occluded vein grafts, which can sometimes serve as uh, collateral avenues when trying to cross a CTO. The dual injection is very important during PCI as well. This is an example from a patient with a right coronary artery CTO. The guide wire here has crossed subintimally. The guide wire was exchanged for a stingray balloon in order to achieve re-entry. However, in this dual injection, it is evident that the stingray did not go in the distal right. Instead, it went into a side branch, likely an acute marginal branch. The vessel was um, recrossed using a knuckle, and now dual injection again confirms that uh, the knuckle is indeed into the distal right coronary artery. And then after successful crossing of the lesion is achieved, we used contralateral injection once again to be able to estimate where is the best starting point for deploying the stent. After doing that, an excellent result was achieved. So dual angiography is critical. A variation of that is use of triple angiography. This is an example of a patient with dual femoral and radial angiography, which was done because she had a right coronary CTO and want to go retrograde through a proximal septal collateral, but all the visualization of the right happened through the lima and the LAD, and that's why a guide was used in the lima, a guide in the LAD, and the guide in the right coronary artery. So in summary, dual injections are critical for the success of CTO interventions. It is very important to spend the time and the effort to do a very careful and thorough pre-procedure review of the angiogram, we should focus on the four elements, proximal cap, lesion length, distal cap, and collaterals. And finally, use dual angiography during intervention to guide our procedure. All this um, approach is detailed into the manual of CTO interventions, as well as in the basic uh, talks from ctofundamentals.org. Thank you very much.